I should start with the Chinese University. How many of you have been to that campus? Uh, okay, so everybody has, has been to that campus. So if we have nine universities in Hong Kong, but I think this has the best feng shui. Right? <laughs> so, so, and, and, and we are very, very happy to be there and very proud um, to be there. So what I'm talking about is integrating natural and cultural heritage, the advantage um, of feng shui landscape. Um, I want to confess that um, I look at feng shui from the environmental perspective. And we don't look at feng shui from the cultural perspective. Um, when I started working on this um, in the year 2000, um, I had issues with reviewers of journals. So when you send the journal, they start writing back that, oh, there is no cultural. So I had to, to take my stand and say, I know it's, it's really cultural, but uh, we are also looking at it um, from the environmental and ecological perspective. And we got accepted, and that is um, where we are. I have no outline. Um, I just thought, you know, we should discuss, and you know, you can stop me at any point. And you know, we let's just have a discussion so that. And um, one of the things you mentioned is I do knowledge sharing and management for development. I like knowledge sharing. You know, so what I know you don't know, I share what you know, and I don't know. Uh, we share. I think this is what makes um, you know a better situation. Um, how many of you have seen this? You know this guy. Yeah, if you are in Hong Kong, you probably know this guy. Yeah. Um, what does he do? Allegedly, Feng Shui. <laughs> Allegedly, <laughs> Feng Shui. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the best Feng Shui master. I think that's what they say. But I got this from the. Um, there is um, a newspaper which is online called China. They just call it China, and they referred to him as. Um, the use and abuse of feng shui um, in Hong Kong. So he uses that knowledge for different purposes. Um, I don't take issues with him. If I can use that knowledge the way he does, I would be very happy and I will not be here. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be standing here. Yeah, so, but, uh, but we are not doing as he is. So we, ours is to try to share. Um, my topic is natural and cultural heritage. So what I do is I start to look at heritage. Um, so we, we agree together what heritage is. And then we move on to the cultural aspect of heritage. And then we move on to the natural aspects of heritage. And then at the end, we put them together, natural and cultural. And then we will see together if they are important or if they are not important. So that's, that's my, my kind of outline, what I, want, what I want to do. Now, heritage defines a sense of place. At any time, any point in time, heritage is basically like a sense of place. That means it's something that you like, something that you think you live with, something that is relevant to you, some, you know, and so on. So I hope you will see that. How many minutes do I have? Uh, it's up to about uh, 30 to 40 minutes. It's not up to me because I'm, I'm, standing, <laughs> it goes to 30 minutes, I'm yeah. standing between people and dinner, I think. So, 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 so I, don't, I don't want to take so much time, I, I, I hope. Um, so it's sense of place, and I hope uh, we identify that. Now, we look at things like, in terms of sense of place, that's where you are. And sense of place, you can always view, this is visual, so what you see, you can always refer to that. This is cognitive, what you understand, you know, out of it. And the last one is experiential, that is how you get involved in that heritage perspective. So, so all, those, all those three. And for different people, so um, for us, we actually look at the place, because I'm from the geography perspective. So if you are a psychologist, is you are cognitive, you are trying to understand, if you are an anthropologist, maybe it's what you see, you know, whatever, you can always find yourself in what we call a heritage scape. So there is heritage scape, you know, there is landscape, there is cityscape, 
and there is also the heritage scale, which has um, a spectrum. Um, so, if 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 we think something is a heritage, then in that sense, it is either cultural um, or it has some certain links, links with the past, links with the history, links with a specific place. So I hope we understand that and let's remember that because I will come back to that um, again in a minute. Um, history and culture will allow us to understand what we are talking about. So there is this, this adage that uh, if you don't know where you are going, you better know where you are coming from. So in case there is anything, you can always say, I came from there. And so you can be able to go back, you know, to trace back. But if you don't know where you are going, uh, then that is um, also a challenge. Um, whenever I try to talk on heritage, um, and, and I'm not talking to you like students. I'm talking to you like, you know, colleagues. You know, all of us are in this together. So we are sharing. I always try to understand the fact that heritage is so many things. It's the past, it's the future, it's today, you know, and so on. So there is living heritage, something that we do for daily life. Okay, so if you look at Hong Kong, you have so many streets. Everything has a street in Hong Kong. Can you tell me one or two streets? There is the birds street, right? Birds. There is also the flower street, right? There is the wedding card street. There is the dry seafood street. <laughs> there is ladies street, you know, and so on. So let me just stop here. But you know, anything you can think of has um, a street, and it didn't start today. Uh, when the colonialists came, they started staying, those streets started to become. So it has been there a long time ago, and it's here now. So that's what I'm talking about. It's for the people who are here, um, it's heritage. Now, it's cultural and it's natural, and those two becomes an inspiration, um, you know, to our livelihood. Uh, and this is what I, I got from a textbook, and this heritage is a gift from the past to the future. Heritage is a gift from the past to the future, because we respect it because it's heritage long time ago, and we are using it now, and we want our next generation to continue to use it. So, it's a whole gamut. Um, we look at many different areas in the world and anywhere you are there is a heritage maybe not for you but for those local people in any part of the world so some of them are very unique some of them are you know scientifically important some of them are for conservation you know some of them for preservation you know and so on these are some of these landscapes uh, are from Inner Mongolia. Uh, most of these are not my photos. If, if it is my photo, I will tell you. <laughs> because um, I like to show my photo as well, uh, if I'm the one who takes it. Um, we, now, that one is mine. Okay, so that's mine uh, from China, uh, somewhere. Um, we have UNESCO. You know UNESCO? Yeah, so UNESCO has a World Heritage Convention. Um, they had a congress last week uh, in China, I just attended, uh, and, and that uh, ended uh, last week on, I can't remember now, you know, it's, it's too many things, but just less than three days now. Um, and so they have differences, so they have cultural heritage, and they say cultural heritage, this, is, this definition is from UNESCO, and you can basically get it on the website of UNESCO's website. And it's a monument, it's a group of buildings, it's historical, it's archaeological, it's scientific, it's anthropological, 
So you see, even UNESCO is not sure what it is. They just put everything together. You know, but, but we accept that, and that is, um, you know, what we do. Now, this is, this is Hong Kong, right? And Taiwo. Yeah, so Taiwo. So Taiwo can also be reflected. And that's also my photo. <laughs> okay. Now, if they say cultural heritage is all this, then we can decide to, to break down cultural heritage so that we can be able to identify what we are interested in. So in this sense, we can look at it as artistic achievement, and that means uh, it can be tangible and it can be intangible. So you can identify it as an entity or you cannot. So artistic achievement, you know, with creative innovation, you know, and so on. Um, it has influenced quite a few people and, you know, a group of, of civilization. Um, uh, these, these guys are actually from uh, um, South America. I think it's Bolivia, you know, or somewhere. And they are all worshipping uh, the mountain because to them that's a strong heritage. The same thing is ha happening in Mount Fuji, if you know, and, and I think also uh, in Nepal and other places. Um, so a heritage can be an example of human settlement. Okay, so I will show you in a minute, you know, some photos of human settlement. Uh, that students too, and also can be events, okay? Uh, and I think you know where this is. You know where this is? When in Turkey? In Turkey. So that's one of those, because in Turkey, it's one of the, the countries that have so many heritage sites, world-recognized heritage sites, and so they have heritage trails that you follow. In Hong Kong, we also have heritage trails. But I'm not talking about those, um, you know, today. 